Welcome to the post credit show. I'm your host, Lucius, my boy, Lockie. He's back, back again. Don't forget to like, follow and subscribe on YouTube, on Facebook, on Spotify, not on Google Podcasts, because apparently that's dead now. Maybe. But pretty much everywhere else. What's <laughs> cracking, bro? Living the dream, mate. What dream? Exactly. <laughs> but we're back. <laughs> we're back. Back with a vengeance. Back again. Guess who's back? How good is that new... Have you heard Houdini by Eminem? I actually have. It is absolutely lighting up the Gen yeah. Z kids I, like crazy, and I'm living for it. I can confirm that I have actually heard that song, <laughs> which is out of the norm for me, because I usually don't listen to that <laughs> but oh, I made an exception. Oh, dear. Hey, um, let's talk about WWE. WWE right now, they're in like an era that we haven't seen, I think, almost ever. Like people are comparing this era of WWE, the the Paul Levesque Triple H era, yep. to the Attitude Era. But I'm actually going to make a bit of a call here and say that the Attitude Era is old news. What we are stepping into now is something completely different. Yes, I do And agree. it's huge. Well, you just got to look at the numbers. <clears throat> you look at, you know, all of the social media presence. The whole world's talking about it at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's just going positive to positive every single week. So, yeah, no, it's it's just bigger and better than ever. Um, it's turned into, you know, it's turning into the biggest, one of the biggest spectacles on earth at the moment. Um, and you've got, you know, plenty more coming up. What have we got this Sunday? We got this, this week coming up. Yep. We've got Money in the Bank That's 2024, the yep. which is going to be huge. There are so many things going on leading into Money in the Bank. Yeah. Uh, with storylines involving um, Bo Dallas or, or Taylor Rotunda, yep. as his yep. real name is. Um, the, the whole Uncle Howdy, the White Six, Chad Gable, uh, the whole Alpha Army, uh, mm -hmm. Alpha Academy, sorry, breaking up. You, you've got the the whole thing going on with the Bloodline and Sola oh. Sokoa and the Tongans oh. and Paul Heyman being power bombed by yep. the Tongans through a table yep. and and Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. And uh, like, it's just absolutely insane. There was a really interesting moment though. There's a really interesting moment when, when SmackDown this week opened and you had... Uh, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, and Cody Rhodes yep. in the ring. And Cody was standing there with the microphone and he's talking about you know having the undisputed WWE championship. And there was a look that Randy Orton yeah, gave him I behind him. I'm like... The gaze. I saw the, it, was, it was just a quick glimpse. It was a quick but look. It was, but it was there. And it was placed there on purpose. I am convinced that yeah. very soon down the track, we're going to get this current version of Randy Orton, but a heel turn. Mate. The Viper. Oh, the Viper. Oh. They call him the Viper for the reason, mate. He's always around. But look, before we even get to all of that, there's still so much more to happen. So we've got, uh, as of recording, we've got seven days until um, Money in the Bank. Yes. Yep. Um, before we get to that, there's still a lot of story to tell. We don't actually have all the matches for Money in the Bank lined up. We no. know what the matches are going to be. We don't know who is in all of them. So... Covering off a couple of things. The Wyatt Six, they are the wild card. We have a Money in the Bank match coming up next week that includes uh, Jey Uso, Carmelo Hayes, Andrade, LA Knight, somebody else who will be determined this weekend, mm -hmm. uh, this 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 coming week, yep. and Chad Gable. Now, Was well, he alive? The Wyatt Six, <laughs> very much unalived Chad Gable. Well, he was dead. <laughs> and then the following week, the Wyatt Six were again a presence... At yeah. the end of Chad Gable's match. Chad, run. What did they give him? They gave they, him a box. The, what was uh, like it, a parcel. The, yeah, yeah. In the parcel That's right. was a VHS videotape yes. that in very in very jigsaw saw movie franchise fashion. You, you want to play a game? Do you want to play a game? <laughs> uh, very saw franchise um, uh, homage going on here. Uh, the the videotape was given to Michael Cole. It was then played at the end of the episode where you saw Bo Dallas being interviewed by his alter ego, Uncle Howdy. And it was chilling. It was real. Yeah, it was real. It was chilling. You could sense the emotion, but you could also sense that there's something so much darker coming. Yep. This was the... Um, so we were chatting earlier before the show, and you were saying this was the build-up 18 months. So this was part of the storyline 18 to 24 months ago. And then obviously we had the really unfortunate passing of Bray Wyatt. Yep. So this is... This so is so this is the very, following on from that. Yeah, so there's a very strong suggestion at the moment from people inside the um, inside the hallowed turf yeah. uh, of of WWE headquarters that are suggesting that this 
interview mm -hmm. that Bo Dallas did with Uncle Howdy yes. was actually supposed to be Bray Wyatt being interviewed by Uncle Howdy at this point in the story yeah. that was already yeah. pre-written. Now, I don't know how true that is. It is just a rumor, um, but I can very much see Bray Wyatt's fingerprints all over oh, everything that's going on right it now. It just screams, you know, it screams Bray Wyatt. Yeah. But just it's also, it's actually yeah. really fascinating as well because when you actually watch the video, there's a moment at the end there where they zoom out and you see them both sitting both opposite there, each yes. other. But what you don't actually see unless you look for it is in the background, in the darkness, there's a white door in the middle. I did not pick that up. That white door and the set that they're sitting on yes. is the lightless, lifeless Firefly Funhouse set. Jesus Christ. That's that Bray Wyatt used to have the Firefly Funhouse. That's a tongue twister. That's cool. Like the detail is just insane. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. It, it, was, it was very well made. Um, now, this is a PLE coming up this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so WWE has a tendency, and if we have a look at WrestleMania and everything since, big things are happening at their PLEs right now. Like yeah. huge moves are happening. Like obviously Clash of the Castle, we had CM oh. Punk screwing over Drew McIntyre. Oh, oh, oh. How good was that? Mate. And he, oh. <laughs> the, the, the fact yeah. that they had the camera positioned just perfectly so you see a referee well, you slide didn't, in, you didn't know, and but then, you didn't know it was him. He even wore a long yes, black sleeve shirt so you couldn't see yep. his tattoos. You didn't know it was him until he stopped right before the three and then he turns. Count with a two count. Oh, my God, yep. it's CM Punk. Yep. He had the two count up. And he just his eyes were just piercing right, and then he kicked him in the nuts. Oh, and fantastic. then that was the end. And then, um, and then obviously the next a couple of days later, Drew absolutely Ooh. slaughtered like unalived CM Punk. So that, I, I just, yeah. pff, well, the God. garage door as the garage door rolled up, you just saw a lifeless CM Punk just laying there, and then you've got old McIntyre's picks him up, and, carries and him out. Drops just him. dumps him. Doesn't put him down. No. Nah. Dumps him. You, you hear the thump. Well, you, I was just about to bring that up. You could actually hear the collision that his back shoulder smacked into the ground. And yeah. it was it was a solid hit. Like it would have hurt. But and then and then obviously, you know, like the camera pans out and he's like blood coming well, out of his mouth well and his guts. And like, you know, and this is the thing, even in the attitude era, Vincent Kennedy McMahon uh -huh. had a very strong no blood the, rule. He had the blood rule, that's yeah. right. And that he seems would to just be fine wrestlers. There was a wrestling match. Like when you listen to Mark Calloway, The Undertaker's Six Foot Under podcast. Yep. Um, fantastic listen, by the way. If you haven't listened to it, you love your wrestling content, go listen to Six Foot Under. And also Chris Van Vliet. Um, Insight with Chris Van Vliet is fantastic. He actually interviewed The Undertaker last week and it was just such a good episode. Mm. Um, but they were talking about uh, when when Hunter, Triple H, yes. who at that time was married to Stephanie McMahon. Yep. So, you know, Vince's son-in-law yep. and The Undertaker, who was the golden goose, Still the is, goose yeah. that laid the golden egg for Vince. <laughs> the big goose. When they had their WrestleMania match years back and they bled. They got fined. They got fined. Yeah. His own son-in-law and the guy who made who kept his company afloat during the the uh, Monday Night Wars both yeah. got fined for bleed. So you know, like seeing blood in television now, it makes it it makes it so much more real. But here's the thing, and this mm. is this is something that there's a lot of frustration at the moment in WWE from a production standpoint because you can't always control what the crowd are doing. No. Sometimes the crowd chants things that they probably shouldn't chant for live television. And sometimes there are posters in the crowd that shouldn't be in the crowd for live television. Yep. And the, the television company, Fox, Fox Network for SmackDown in particular this week, instead of allowing WWE to edit their show, Fox actually cut the feed three or four times throughout the show. Oh, that really? actually made it look like WWE kept stuffing up and losing their broadcast feed. It actually made WWE look really bad until it was announced that, no, no, this is Fox getting involved. Triple H this week comes out and says, guys, good news. On January 1st, Monday Night Raw moves to Netflix. Whoa. And it is completely Uncens uncensored. So Fox have just lost one of their biggest draw cards. Yep. All because they got they had to they had to get involved. They sound like Sony a bit, don't they? Five billion dollars to move to Netflix, mate. That's chump change for Netflix right now because they are hot. Yeah, wow. So it's going to be crazy. Wow. All you need is Netflix to but keep up with Raw. We mentioned this at the start of the show, though, with what's happening in the current era of WWE. When when in, when would you have ever thought that it would be now worth over? It's a five like five billion dollars for the rights of WWE. Not even for the rights. No. It's not just it's not the rights of oh, WWE. It's the viewership. Just, it is just for Monday Night Raw. 
When the hell would you have ever said that to yourself and believed it? It doesn't include PLEs. It doesn't include Friday Smack Night Smackdown. Down. It doesn't include NXT. It's That's just one for show. Raw. One weekly episode. So 52 episodes. Yep. $5 billion. Yep. Friggin' hell. Mm. Holy moly. Crazy. Insane. <laughs> like, uh, But see, this is the thing. This is the thing that I'm loving about WWE right now. It has never felt more real. I agree. It has never felt more real. And that's why I say this version of WWE is better than the Attitude Era. I'm, I'm, you know, you've got the iconic characters of the 90s, the early 2000s. But now in your own right, you've got, you've got these guys coming through. Like we're seeing now that the John Cena's, you know, the Brock Lesnar's, they're now, they're, they're dropping off. Yep. Um, and you're getting this, you're getting this new and this new, this incredible new, like, crop of Some stars. of the talent, like um, LA Knight, for example, I was watching the Triple Threat match the other day. You know, he's a big dude, man. But to, for him to be able to get around the ring, it's very impressive. Um, you've got the... On the note of LA Knight, yeah. um, he is actually not a new talent. LA Knight is 41 years old. Well, he don't look it. He's been doing this for a very long time. It's only just that WWE, Triple very... H in particular, found has found him. Okay, well, that's good. So he be... was actually... Yeah. He's actually a former... TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Okay, well, for me, I only watched the Raw. I only watched the WWE, so I wasn't aware of that. But yeah. it's good that we're starting. Yeah, we're getting the new blood in, and they are just, mate, they're killing it. You Cody Rhodes, you Seth love Rollins. Cody, I love Cody Rhodes, man. You know what? And this is the reason why I still, ladies and gentlemen, I have some unfortunate news. This plonk still hasn't watched the boys. So uh, Cody Rhodes is being compared to Homelander. Yeah, at the, the blonde hair and the piercing eyes. Not only that, yeah. because he is actually starting to show tendencies that he's not far away from turning heel himself from in Cody. a very in a very Homelander way. <laughs> well, it's a pretty big show at the moment. It yeah. wouldn't surprise me that it's got its you know, mitts on someone out there or yep, whatever yep. else. But now by time this episode comes out, we will have had uh, Monday Night Raw. Yep. It's Monday Night Raw, Tuesday for Australia, Monday night for the rest of the world. Um, so on Monday Night Raw this week, we've got the Men's Money in the Bank qualifying match, Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre versus Ludwig Kaiser. Sheamus. Burger <laughs> after burger <laughs> after burger. Dude, uh, I love credit Sheamus. Credit to him though, he's slimmed down a lot in the last yeah, couple of months. Yeah, hey, kudos to him because it's not easy to do as we, as you and I both know. <laughs> but mate, Sheamus, what a, what an athlete. He's still going around. Has he still got the... um? The bright so red he still hair. got the chin strap? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same, yeah, yeah. same beard. Can, yep, 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 yep. Jesus yep. Christ. Um, so I don't know. I, I I don't know who wins that. I, I genuinely don't know. I think the obvious answer is Drew McIntyre. Well, is Because it Drew McIntyre won the World Heavyweight Championship off Seth Rollins at WrestleMania yeah. and then had it cashed in on him by Damian Priest. Well, didn't. So it yeah. does make storyline sense that Drew McIntyre now enough. wins and cashes in on Damian Priest at some point. Well, I think that's where it has to go because obviously we had the fight. We had the uh, Clash of the Castles. Um, yeah, Clash the, of the Castle. Clash yeah. of the Castle. So the ending there was obviously Priest won. Yep. Um, that feud's not over. So I, no, I, no, I, yeah. I, I think I think Drew wins Money in the Bank. Yep. Gets the briefcase. Yep. B- briefcase cashes in on Priest while CM Punk is out injured after what Drew did to him. Oh, and yeah. then Drew versus CM Punk at SummerSlam for that title. And Priest will probably then get involved in that. And then there'll no, be a, I, I, no, I think that'll be it for Priest. You reckon? I do think that'll be it for Priest. Okay. I think the reason why I believe that Drew's going to cash in is because for some strange reason in Chicago, Monday Night Raw last week, instead of what we all thought was going to open the show, yep. uh, which was something about Chad Gable and how he was murdered the week before, <laughs> the show started with Seth Rollins Seth making Rollins. his big comeback from WrestleMania. Four, we haven't seen him since WrestleMania. That's four months ago, wasn't it? Three or four months. So all of a sudden, Seth Rollins is back, yep. and he's headlining Money in the Bank with Damian Priest. Mm. Really strange. Yep. Out of nowhere. Felt rushed. Seth Rollins yeah. will not win. Damian Priest will win. Earlier in the night, Drew McIntyre will have won Money in the Bank and he will cash in on Damian Priest. My tip for Money in the Bank is that Drew leaves with the title. The old Claymore, mate. Absolutely. <laughs> then we've got the Women's Money in the Bank qualifying match with Zoe Stark, Dakota Kai and Ivy Nile. I think Ivy Nile wins that, although I can see Dakota Kai winning it. In fact, you know what? I can see all three of them winning it. Yep. Um, that's going to be a really, really interesting one. I think, I think the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match... There are so many storylines that can be told. Mm-hmm. I don't know which way they're going to go, but I think there's many different stories that can be told regardless of who they choose. Yep. And then obviously Monday Night Raw, we have a weird one for a Monday Night Raw, Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio. 
Yeah. That's that needs to end. I'm a bit over that. I do believe that there will be a uh, a bit of interference again from Liv Morgan. I think Liv Lord. Morgan's going to end up costing Rey Mysterio the match, and then that's going to go into yeah. something that's going on later in the night when you've yeah. got Liv Morgan putting her title on the line against Zelina Vega. So you've got Dominic Mysterio versus Rey Mysterio. So Dominic is in the Judgment Day. Rey Mysterio yeah, is in the yeah. LWO. Yeah. Uh, LWO. Then you've got Zelina Vega, who's also in the LWO, and you've got Liv Morgan, who's the champion, who is not in the judgment day but she's trying to replace Rhea Ripley as Dominic's whilst, mummy while she's injured yeah so I think there's a, a combined storyline going on between those two gr- those two matches yeah I'm a bit over it, that one it, look I, I think it's compelling TV I think what needs to happen now is I'm actually done with the Dominic Mysterio yeah. being the bad guy thing I yeah. want to see Dominic and Ray reunite yeah. And I want to give, I want to see Dominic give Ray the send off he deserves. And yeah. I think Ray, Ray, like, mate, you've, you've been going since what well, twenty five years, he, he, he longer. Was, like he he, was, he's he's been going since the early nineties. Yeah, wow. Well, he's a champion. He deserves a good. He deserves to be sent he's out the right way. He's an absolute legend. He's oh, an mate. icon. He's one an of the already, best. Already a hall of famer. One of the best. Well, he's and yeah, he's still active. So yeah. You don't usually see that. Obviously, they retire generally before they get inducted. So exactly. But he he was a he was a favorite of mine in the early two thousands. I think as soon as that six one night came out, every single man and their dog was like, "He's my favorite." Yep. We've all tried to do it. We've all injured ourselves trying to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I do love Ray, and I want him to go out. And, you know, I want him to go out. In the the right only way. way I can see the Ray and Dominic storyline wrapping up that doesn't involve Dominic doing a face turn. Mm. Is a hair versus mask match for Dominic and Ray. Yeah, okay. Put Dominic's Eddie Guerrero style mullet on the line against Ray Mysterio's mask. Yeah. Because yeah. we actually haven't seen an unmasked Ray Mysterio in WWE. We did in WCW when he was a part yeah. of the Filthy Animals. Yeah, okay. I'm There's going to be a few wrestling fans out there watching that going, oh my God, the Filthy Animals. Wow. Haven't heard that one for a while. There you go. Ching. Um, and then this all brings us all oh, the way around this is to it. money in the bank. This is the one. This is the one. Mm-hmm. The men's money in the bank match. Carmelo Hayes and Andrade, mm-hmm. who I think are just taking up, filling, like I think they're just fillers at this but point. But he's a ferocious thing, that Andrade. Yeah, he is. He's a he is. beast. Then you've got main event Jey Uso. Yep. Chad Gable. Yep. LA Knight. Yep. And I think Drew McIntyre. Which is going to include the Wyatts. They're going to pop I up. think the Wyatt six are going to cost Chad the opportunity. They're coming in. They're coming in hot. 100%. What has what what Chad, does, what has he done to deserve this? Um, everything, do- everything about his heel turn has been magic. Yeah. He is a really bad dude now. And the Alpha Academy, who were his little buddies that he was training, yeah, yeah. he's now been very abusive to. And they, the night that the Wyatt Six attacked was also the night that the Alpha Academy left him. Okay. So he hasn't... He, he, no. So he's a bad, <laughs> bad man. And <laughs> I think the Wyatt Six are, are here to, to seek cause, retribution. Cause havoc. Absolutely. So my hot tip for that one, um, it's a bit of a coin flip. Uh, it, I mean, it could be Jey Uso. could be main event Jey Uso. Um, he is very hot right now. He's very, very hot right well, now. They all, they it all could are, be yeah. LA Knight, although I don't think it will be. I don't I, think it will be because LA Knight is in the process of a program occurring with Logan Paul. Yeah, I believe yeah. SummerSlam we're going to have Logan Paul versus LA Knight for the US title. So yeah, I think Logan yeah. Paul will probably interfere in this match as well. Yeah, well, my whole tip he'll be there is either Jay Uso or Drew McIntyre. And if you know the history between Dre, between Jay and Drew, you know that Drew winning this will not only be his avenue to the title, but it'll also be his big middle finger to Jay Uso. Who doesn't Drew have a feud with at the moment? It seems he's gone after everyone. <laughs> then we've got the women's money in the bank. Yep. We've got EO Sky, so the former WWE champ- women's champion. Yep. Chelsea Green, who I can just see being a perfect chaser for this for this belt. Mm-hmm. Like I can see her with um Piper Niven at her side and, and this yeah, I can just I think Chelsea Green would be a great choice. Uh, Lyra Valkyria, Tiffany Stratton, who I can also see as a really, really strong money. In, the, in fact, I could probably see her as the fan favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I believe, I think it'll be either Ivy Nile or Zoe, 
Zoe Stark going into that match. Okay. So that's that's a that's a hard one as well. Like this I don't feel there is as much of a hype around the women's money in the bank no, this year not, as what there not, was last not year. Not this year, no. But that's I okay that. because I still think they're going to put on an absolute show. 100%. My hot tip for that one is Tiffany Stratton. Okay. It's Tiffy time. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> And then going into the last three matches, we have got absolute fire here. Damian Priest yep. versus Seth freaking Rollins. Yeah, we've got that. Yeah. My hot tip. Seth. Seth loses. Oh. Damian Priest wins. And then. And then Drew McIntyre cashes, cashes in, in on him. Yeah, that's, that sounds pretty legit. I think that is where we go. Um, a lot on the line. Yeah. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good it's day. It's going to be a great one. Yeah. Then we've got. Uh, you might not have seen too much about this guy. Sami Zayn as the Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, got Sami, yep. Braun Breaker. Don't know who he is. Do you ever remember the Steiner brothers? No. Nah. Rick and Scott Steiner? No. Nah. Oh, this is going back to the 1990s. Yeah, okay. There's two brothers. Big Papa Pump is your hookup. Holla if you hear me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Big Papa Pump is your hookup. Holla if you hear me. Are they back? Uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Bron Breaker. Their son or something? Is, I think it's Rick Steiner's son. Okay. And he is a monster. Is he? This guy runs the ropes mm. at something like 62 miles an hour. No. Dead set. I'm Shh. gonna I'm going to show you a video clip of this. Um, we're going to take a moment. I'm going to show Lockie a video clip. We'll be back in just a second. <laughs> We are back. Lockie has just been educated in all of the goodness that is Bron Breaker. So, oh. Sami Zayn versus Bron Breaker. Who are you going? Breaker. Yeah. <laughs> Every day of the week. I don't know. Jeez. Sammy's out here looking to get yeah, squashed, The man. old redhead ain't surviving this, mate. <laughs> Far out. That was some serious footage. Yeah, man. Jesus yeah. Christ. Old Scotty, uh, Uncle Scotty's uh, Uncle Scotty's nephew. nephew. <laughs> like right. I said, man, big pop of pop is your yeah, hookup. No, I've, I, I've got it now. It's come back to me. And the main event. Yes. This is so, uh, so this storyline, the bloodline storyline. There's a lot of people who are loving it, but then there's a lot of people who are like, oh, for God's sake, I'm sick of seeing the bloodline. I'm firmly in the I want more camp. Prior to SmackDown this week, I was over it. I'm sitting here going, finish it up, move on. But that ending to SmackDown last week, uh, sorry, this Tell week. Tell them what happened. So the ending of the ending of SmackDown. So you had the, um, I can't remember their names. Uh, so you got Solitikoa, Tamatonga, Tangaloa, and Jacob Fatu. Yep. So the one with the blonde hair. Which one's he? Solo Secure, the head of the the, the new the, head the of new the world, current, that's... the Tongan bloodline. So he's got everybody to basically commit to him. They've all acknowledged, acknowledged, their acknowledged that he is their tribal chief. And then you've got poor old bloody Paul Heyman <laughs> standing there. Who he looks like he's just he looks like he's just uh, gone to a funeral, mate. He was he's, he just looked completely defeated. Incredible, great, incredible great, incredible spot by Paul Paul Heyman. Oh, great acting, the but, greatest in the world to do it. But then the poor bugger. Got absolutely smoked. Got power bombed onto the uh, announcement table, and, and a big man big, in his sixties. Yeah, to have to cop that, all because he said he does not recognise this fella as his tribal chief. Now, because there is only one tribal there's only, chief in his eyes. There's only one, and he's coming back. He is. Oh, I look. I, I I genuinely believe that Roman will be back very soon. With the Usos, do you think? Well, that's a really interesting question that... because if we have a look at the current, if we have a look at Money in the Bank, we mm -hmm. have a match here with Cody Rhodes, that's Randy right. Orton, and Kevin Owens. That's right. Versus the Bloodline. Now yes. there is four members of the Bloodline, but there is an interesting fact here about Jacob Fatu. Yep. Jacob Jacob Fatu actually has a felony criminal history. Is he the psychotic one? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the the Tongan Wolverine. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was shit. a freaking great entr entrance by him. By makes uh, sense. By the way. Um, which means there is a very strong possibility. Now WWE have some very good lawyers, but it could mean that uh, Jacob Fatu can't travel international. Oh, so he's 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 gone and done a naughty. Oh he? boy, he's caused himself a mischief. Yes. Oh, oh naughty man. Yes. Well, yeah. So that could mean that it's just Solo, Tamatonga, and Tongaloa. So where's where is where is the where is this uh, main in event? Canada? 
No, no, they let anyone in. They're pretty easy to get into, aren't they? Yeah, I just think it's America to, trying to get back into America is the problem. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, there's a wall at Mexico. You just crawl under that if you, <laughs> if you need you. Anyone can get into that joint. But look, I mean, there is a really... I'm, I, I would be very surprised if if Roman Reigns returns at Money in the Bank. There are four big pay-per-views per year. Yeah. Money in the Bank is not one of them. Yeah, I get it. He is the tribal so chief. SummerSlam? I think SummerSlam. Yeah, when's that? That's uh, August. August. August, yeah. It's the next pay-per-view after, after Money in the Bank. I don't know. I think August. But I think yeah. there will be very hard teasers to the tribal chief's presence They'll be starting so very soon. I think we might see a, maybe a short video or something at Money in the Bank with Roman... He, yeah, because he's going to come after them. As you, we, we all know that. We know where this is heading. Yep. Um, but, man, it's good to watch, isn't it? It's bloody exciting. And now if, you go back to, if you go back and think about WrestleMania, right, and you're thinking about the fact that Roman was the head of the table, but then you had the final boss, The Rock, come in, and there was that immediate friction between the two of them. Yeah. Who's the head of the real yep. – who's the real head of the table here, right? Now if you put the current Bloodline story into the context of is The Rock – the new bloodlines head of the table. Is that what sets up the rock versus Roman reigns at WrestleMania 41 in Vegas at Allegiant stadium? There's so many avenues. I love it, man. I love this. Uh, I, the excitement's back. It's crazy. It's back. It's crazy. We haven't had this for years. Yeah. Uh, so the last, the last two, three years have been, you know, pretty great. But now this, I feel this year, it's just, it's gone up a notch. Yep. It's got people like myself back into it that yep. didn't watch it for a number of years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the 2000s was pretty ordinary for WWE, um, but it's back, and it's bloody good to see. Now, I'd has. like to formally acknowledge my tribal chief is Roman Reigns. Mine's, so. Ray, mine's Randy Orton. RKO, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love pissing him oh off. Oh my god! Nah, I, I'm on the Roman bandwagon <laughs> as well because I, I don't, I don't like this new bloke. Um, He's got a haircut. But look, uh, I, I don't think that we can go too further on the Roman Reigns track without sending our condolences and our thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. To the Anoi family, um, yeah, Sika, one of the Wild Samoans. Yeah. And Roman Reigns's beloved father yeah. passed away this past week. Um, rest in power. Yep. Uh, Roman and the rest of the family, our thoughts are with you. Uh, we can't wait to have you back because, say it with me, Lockie, we want Roman. I had a pen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, cool. So, yeah, uh, look, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much it today. Uh, I will see you on Sunday for Money in the Bank. Kane, here comes the money. The, the money. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. <laughs> I've been Loose. That's been Lockie. You've been you. Say hi to your mum for me. Bye-bye.